Hello, welcome to another edition of the program Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio. My name is Mute Olori. Nigerian women all over the world in politics, business, social enterprise, public policy, the corporate space, the creative sector, they are all present and redefining what leadership and excellence mean. They've broken through the gender barriers and have become visionaries, leaders and an inspiration for young women all over the world. On our edition today, we will be looking at women in leadership roles, breaking the barrier using the Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Weala story. My guest today is the National Coordinator and Founder, Partnership for Rural Women Development. She's also the National Coordinator for Nigeria Young Women Political Forum and the National Woman Leader for Good Governance Ambassadors of Nigeria. She's no other person than Hajia Zainab Mohammed. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Mute. How Great. are you today? Very well, thank you. Good. All right, so we are celebrating. You know, Nigerian women, they've come a long way to the point where today we can beat our chest and say we are on the global uh, focus. You know, the world is talking about us. Can we just briefly look at how did we get here? Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Three times. We, in the last decade, We've been fighting, we've been talking, we've been advocating, and we've been creating awareness around gender inclusion and giving us an enabling environment. It's been tough. And if you look at the women breaking the ceiling, our North Han Peak, merit, merit. So um, it's good, it's brilliant because um, of course, today is all about Ngozi Nkojewela and women in leadership. Um, she's an amazing woman. Right, uh, we've, we've seen on social media lately all her background, the startup story from being a child with her grandparents, joining her parents, and the family believing in giving a girl child the opportunity mm -hmm. to go to school, to get qualitative education, uh, and I mean qualitative education because it's not about just going to school. It's about supporting the child with the quality education and we see what it is today. I think not just Nigeria celebrating Ngozi Nkojo Iwela, mm -hmm. the whole world is celebrating. She's the first black woman in the WTO World Trade the Organization. The first woman. The first woman. The first, the first black. black woman. And um, I think for some of us who've been in the gender um, struggle. struggle for the last decade. Uh, we've followed her story mm -hmm. so strongly with prayers, with advocating, with signing all signatures that need to be signed. And today we are happy. I think um, everybody was glued to the TV until oh, yeah. the last person stepped out and we knew that was an opportunity for us. But all in all, it wasn't just our prayers or our support. It, she merited that position and that's what we are here talking about in as much as we are celebrating her mm. and um, wishing her the best uh, I personally Zainab sitting down here has no issue in terms of her delivering because she will deliver and she's done that we've seen her uh, antecedent as a minister and before joining that you know so um, Ngozi will do the best and make us even more prouder because one of the thing is having the right person, having the right peg in the right hole. And Ngozi is at the leadership, at the peak of a leadership that Nigerian women are going to see more positive results. Um, the black woman will be so proud that Ngozi is there because she'll make us proud. I see that everyone is talking about, oh, I want my child to be like this, I want my daughter to be like Ngozi. How do you think that we would take this victory and strategically place our children in a position or offer them things that would guide them towards 
the ambition that a lot of African women are beginning to have. You say strategically. It's about repositioning our ways of doing things. It's the mindset. We need to change the way we are doing things right now. A lot of, we, 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 are, we are forgetting our tradition and culture in Africa, especially in Nigeria, because we're trying to be doing the Western copying, which it won't work for us. Parents need to go back to being parents mm. of girl child. And we need to continue with people like you in the media, uh, with some of us who are always on the street advocating for girl child. We need to keep advocating for girl child education. And when we talk about girl child education, because in some part of the country, a lot, of, well, with the crisis in security going on right now, we're getting more widows because hmm. men are losing their lives. So we're having more widows and it's becoming a little bit difficult, especially in the rural areas with um, widows tending to kids, tending to family, the economic situation. So girl child are the first victim hmm. being withdrawn from school, getting into an early marriage or helping pair the mom to start hawking and selling things. But we don't want to stop all that. But what we're advocating for right now for Nigerian girl child to be back into school and qualitative schools hmm. is if a child, a girl, helps her mom in the morning, maybe with petty trading, then we should be able to reintroduce the daytime school. We used to have that in those days. We need to reintroduce that so that when she helps her parents in the mo her mom in the morning, she goes to school in the afternoon, she's not losing out. And if it's an afternoon, trade her mom does then she goes to school in the morning so but the fact is our girls must go to school because leadership does not just come by experience or by being handpicked you must have the qualifying profiles to take you to wherever you are going just like we're celebrating one of our amazon today would you say that is what is limiting women in leadership Yes, and then enabling environment. Uh, we're still, I don't want to be negative, but we're still in a patriarchal society where it's all about who you know and um, not being given that enabling environment or inclusive in decision making because that's the way the tradition or the main folk think is, um, is a little bit one of our um, difficult areas, gray areas we need to but one of the things I, I have been saying and I've been advocating for, if a woman is in a leadership position, we should all support her. Um, we've seen women doing amazing things, some female ministers. Uh, we have only seven out of the 42, but the seven has not made us sad. They've made us proud that they're there in... Um, in that leadership position so we need to support them and um, by supporting them and they are doing trailing their places and that give us more opportunity and we need them actually to add their voices to some of us who are out there advocating for women inclusion as well Nigerian men needs to know that giving a women opportunity is not a negative thing right anyway <laughs> before we come to the Nigerian men let's look at the, op the opposition that she had why vying for this particular position? Mm -hmm. She had the qualification. She's paid her dues. Mm -hmm. But still, you would not have expected that such an opposition would come from the Western world. You know? Well, she had the support of Nigerian leaders, actually, because it was not just about a gender thing anymore. It was about who is representing us. The four people or three out there representing us on the bigger picture. They are doing marvelously well. I think she's the only woman, no, the second woman mm -hmm. joining that, that train. And she merited it by all standard. She worked hard for it. She had the experience and the antecedent of her as a minister in this country. No one can so fault that. So why was that an opposition? From, yeah. from people like the US and some quarters that didn't really did it not come to you that people who we are 
you know, when we talk about gender inequality, it's a battle we were fighting, and people will say it's an imported battle. You know, it came from the Western world where you think that women are more liberated, and then you find a situation that an organized a, a country like that would oppose, uh, oppose or yeah, such an appointment for you. Is it racism, you will call it, or what will you describe that? My to? dear sister, leave racism to the corner. Virgin Platform for Action is about women inclusion. That's over 25 years ago. So across the world, we're still vying and talking and advocating for women to be included in leadership position. And we're still doing it across. Yes, some countries are doing better than mm -hmm. others. Even in the Western world, in, in the United States, as we're talking about, um, women are not still at the same cadre with men in terms of payroll and opportunities given. So um, it's an old generational thing that we will get there someday. And I think by getting there someday is the women that are in political position, in leadership position, doing the best they can and building that trust among the men folk, those who make decisions. We know how tough it was mm -hmm. for Ngozi to get to where she is today. And it's, I think it's almost a year we've been following. And one of the things that made me happy about it was we didn't have two candidates from Nigeria. <laughs> if it was a male and a female, you know what will happen, right? So I won't go there. But thank God it was not, we're not given two opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> we're just giving one, and the one was Ngozi and Tank. You know, we give God the glory. She made it finally. We're very glad, and that's mm. why we're celebrating her today. So, um, but we're also going to be focusing on women in leadership. How much do you think that those in leadership who have really earned it and they're doing so well, how much do you think they're trickling it down to raising other women to take over when they? finally leave such a position? That has been an issue for some time now. Mentorship. Leadership mentorship. And um, we've been uh, recently the Beijing Generational Gap uh, mm. Project. A lot of uh, women in leadership position were giving younger women to mentor. And are the younger women ready to be mentored too? It's a two-way thing. Leadership doesn't come easy. Mm. And in our today's world, it's getting difficult because you're not just there as a leader from your community. You are there representing a whole generation of women. So we need, we need women who are in leadership to really find time, two hours, three hours on a weekly basis to mentor younger women coming up. That's, we just have to keep advocating that. Because the gap is really there. The gap is too much and it's scary. The gap is scary. So it doesn't take another 50 years for another woman from Africa, from Nigeria, to get to a position like that. Well, with um, programs like this, programs we are championing um, outside this place, and I, I, be, uh, I believe we belong to a lot of the female platforms, just like I do is um, to just keep advocating and just keep pushing until the women who are in leadership today realize that they need to fill in that gap. Oh. That's just what we, we, we can't stop. Breaking the barrier, women in leadership is what we're talking about, looking at the Ngozi Okojewe-Ala story, how she was able to, despite all odds, break the barrier and today she's the director general world trade organization we'll be right back when we come back we'll be talking about the role of men in supporting women and working with women to attain in leadership role please don't go away I can be all I Welcome back. 
is still the total woman on AD4 TV radio. My name is Muti Olori and my guest, Zainab Muhammad. We have been looking at the victory by our own sister, daughter, mother, you know, uh, and uh, the African woman herself, Ngozi, Oko, Oko, Ngozi Okoje Uweala, who recently became number one, the first woman, the first black, the first African, the first Nigerian woman to become the Director General of the World Trade Organization. It's celebrated all over the world and we see it as breaking the barriers and, you know, breaking through whatever ceilings and laid that has been kept that women cannot go beyond a certain position. So now we want to look at the role of, 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 of men, or should I say husbands, because it's often believed in certain quarters that the woman should be submissive. The woman should be, you know, um, some places they say the woman should not even be above uh, the man. So first of all, let's talk about what's your impression about Oko Joella's husband? Brilliant. We, uh, a, a relationship is a supporting role, it's companionship. If you understand companionship and a supporting role, then there is no story about you are the boss, you are this, you are that. Yeah, tradition, religions have told us the men are the top and the head of the homes. But that's not to say that they should not support you to rise as a mother, of, as a wife, as your sister, as a daughter. Today we are all here celebrating. Nobody is even talking about her husband. Yeah, okay, on some we've seen pictures of her and her yeah, husband. Yeah, and so social so is media, a Okay, and, really, and, thank and you. the children are doing everything. But nobody has actually yeah, we are here celebrating. And we should thank Doctor uh Joy Weller's husband. Thank you for supporting her. Though she came educated into your home, but thank you for supporting her to get to where she is today. And thank you for giving that same room to your children and girl child to become doctors because we've seen their profile on social media. So it's not a big deal. She's just not only add value to her matrimonial home, she had add value to the African continent and to the women folk. So what are we talking about here? Who is not proud to be saying Ngozi is a Nigerian now? Everyone. Everyone. It's not just, we are, okay, yeah, we are celebrating her because we want to use her as a, a yardstick for other women, for other mothers and oh. fathers to be able to enable their girl child to attain. And for even young girls to be inspired so, and say, we, you, yeah, you can be who you, you want to be. be. who you want to be. There are a lot of women's stories today that we've been sharing. Women who have no background, mm -hmm. who have no parents, who were born of, you, you and they are who they are today because someone believed in them and supported them to grow. So what are we talking about? If I'm your wife and you support me to go out there to work or to do my business or to follow my passion and career, you have a better wife at home because I won't be sad, I'll be happy. I'll come home happy. I think one of the gaps we are missing here, because sometimes we use our traditional belief oh. to abuse the system, is about communication. I tell the women who are into politics, communication, communication, communication. You are working till late at night, communicate with your spouse. This is what I'm doing. This. Let them be part of what you are doing too. No matter how busy they are, you need to communicate to them. And you don't come home because I'm the one, that, the breadwinner in the mm. house, or I earn more than you, and start throwing it at anybody's face. Even if the man throws it at you, you don't like it. So why would you throw it back at him? It's about finding the balance. So is that part of the complaint from the men, why they're not supporting women to attain um, uh, whatever position they desire in leadership? African men are programmed and wired differently. Just a, a, a few, maybe a 10% of them are wired differently, <laughs> right? So the, um, we won't go into details, 
But uh, of course, every tradition has their own belief and things. And if our tradition believes that a woman should be submissive, submissive, we need to define that language. Submissive as in just being at home and being the other room service woman, making food and making babies. I can see the smiles in our <laughs> young men in the house. But is that the submissiveness we are talking or the submissiveness in terms of respect, value, and being a companion? We need to define that word. You look at other women out there and you are so proud. That woman is doing extremely well. No man in Nigeria today, in Africa today, is not proud about Uncle Joy Wella. Mm -hmm. So why don't you translate that into practically doing it in your home? But then women need to know where the line is drawn. That's where I'm coming into. Good. How would they go about that? I just said it earlier. We need to communicate and we need to be, that respect must come in. We must understand boundaries. Regardless of where you are in the world, you must re respect boundaries. And if this is your husband, once you are home and you, that garment, everywhere you are, you are oh. a housewife. Oh. And that garment must always be something that you are conscious of. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. A housewife do not just flaunt herself because she, she's been given opportunity to come out to do things. You must at all times understand your boundaries, respect your boundaries, and know that you must communicate to the man that is your husband. So and there are times that whatever position you attain, once you get home, please take that thing off. Take it off. In fact, while you are in the office, whatever leadership position you are, <laughs> you are somebody else's wife. So your behavior in the office should also state that you are a married woman who knows her boundaries. Oh, 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 oh. It's when we start saying, oh, I work for my education, I work for my money, I work for this. Hell no. That's not marriage. That's competition. And no man would like that. No woman would like that either. You can't keep coming to tell me, oh, I buy your sanitary toy, I buy the food, I pay the rent. I, I won't take that. So why should I do it to the other person? All right, let's look at this It's scenario. just boundaries. Respect the boundaries. Redefine your role. We are partners. We are husband and wife. We are companions. We are spouse for crying out loud. We are bringing children into the world. So we must respect boundaries and define our goal as husband and wife. Oh. If I'm, okay, fine. You don't want me to work. You don't want me to do this. But please, down the line, do not throw it on my face. I'll be the mother, I'll be the home teacher for the kids. You and define, do everything you can your to succeed role, them. But you need to define your role oh. and you must respect the boundary and the marriage institution. That's the first thing. Because I, I think I've read somewhere recently, there's social marriages now and there's traditional marriage which has values. A lot of the marriage we see today in the 21st century is social marriages. You see, when we talk about men, or their role, we get very sensitive. So enough of the men and their role, but it's so key if a woman needs to grow. But let's look at women ourselves. What are those things limiting us from growing? Some have great prospects. Mm -hmm. You see, they, from the beginning, they have it all set out that this is my career and this is where I want to go. And after some time, you just begin to see some you know, negative attitude, like you mentioned something, their mindsets are being affected. How do you think that we can, as women on our own, position ourselves so that we can grow in our career and break the ceiling no matter what the terms and reference of the organization says that women cannot go beyond this? Well, I'm glad you're, you're, you're talking about the women uh, themselves. We recently had a program where we do female counseling, laughter period, and um, this conversation came up. You, you, you don't fail and then relax. You fail and learn from that process. Women need to start the abusing their mind. Just because something didn't work the way you planned, 
that's not the end of the road. That is not the end of the road. We are our own enemies, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I get back home a little bit late sometime from work related. And what you need to do is reevaluate yourself. I'm sure before you start this TV radio station, you've tried so many other things. And then we need to find out what is it that makes us tick. Just because while I was growing up, I was good in this, I was good in that, and I wanted to become a medical doctor. And along the line, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm far from a medical doctor. Mm. That does not mean life has stopped for me. It just means change direction. the direction. And what is it? I, I'll give you a good example. Um, my first marriage, this is personal. When it was ending, after eight years, the first two, three days was tough because I had to make a decision. Oh. Should I leave or stay because of family? Should I, if I stay, it will affect my mental health because I'll be depressed, oh. I'm not happy. Uh, or damn the consequences, explain to the family, this is the reason I'm leaving. That was dragging for too long mm -hmm. and then the unhappiness keep coming in. Not wanting to get out of bed in the morning to go to work <laughs> was setting in. So on this particular day, got into the bathroom and the mirror there, I stood there and I asked myself, right in front of the mirror. Just assume this mirror is an ocean mm. and we're flying and a plane crash. I fell into the ocean, I'm not dead. There are so many sharks, but I can see an island there. Would I sit down there and be crying, somebody help me because I can't swim and then get devoured mm. by the shark? Because by being alive from that crash means I've been given a second, second chance. chance. So whether I like it or not, if it means holding a tail of that shark, I'll get to that island. Mm. And that's the decision I took. And I keep telling people today, there's something like a happy divorce and a happy marriage. You don't, because things didn't work out. I didn't get to become the medical doctor that I want to be when I was growing up at the age of 16, 18. Mm. But it has not stopped me from growing up in my own other career that I choose to be. So at every given time, the only person who can tell you the truth is yourself. And you have to decide, deliberately decide to make that decision. That this is what I want and this is how I'm going to get it. It's, it's not a big, it's not one scientific thing. It's as easy as ABC. It starts from you. And so for us to even start talking about awareness, this, this, talk oh. about women issues, talk about this. The, they keep saying women, we are the worst enemy. We, are the, we do the pull down syndrome. We do this. Do I care? Let's focus on your goals. Oh. That's the most important thing. If your goal one is not working, always have a plan B, plan C. You must make that decision that this is what I want to do. And find out, there are so, today it's even easier for the younger ones. You just get on Google, you know how to get any, any information, oh, direction you want. We then, we need to find a mentor, somebody who has been in that field. We didn't have and Google when we were growing up. do apprenticeship. Do apprenticeship, do volunteerism. <laughs> no woman, no young girl today want to come and volunteer in your mm, office for you. Mm, mm, mm. Not at all. Wow. A, 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 a wise man once said that you can only go above the lead that you put on yourself. So as women, whatever lead we put ourselves, we can never go beyond that lead. Thank you so, so much, Zainab. You've, you've really hit the nail on the head. It's all about us. If we are celebrating Okonjo Weala today, you can be the next one if you can just look within yourself and say, I can rewire, change your mindset. And for those who are married, Begin to set priorities. 
so that you can have an, an enabling environment to, to grow. So before I let you go, what message do you have for Gazi Okonjo Wealad? Congratulations. You might be the one in the DG position, but you're carrying all the African women with you. And of course, we can go to bed and sleep at night knowing you are the one at that leadership position. But mentor other women to be leaders. So when you are old and you're on your rocking chair, you know that's one of my mentees. Thank you and congratulations, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Wela. On behalf of your recent position as the DG World Trade Organization, African women are proud of you. Thank you. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Thank you so much. Yeah. And on that note, I would like to say, please, 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 let's put our hands together. The chain can only get tighter when we all put our hands together to work to support women and to support those on top. No more pull-down syndrome, please. Mm -hmm. Let us do what we can to see that she succeed because tomorrow it might just be you. My name is Wuti Honore. I'll be with you again next week. Bye-bye.